turn focus to the fundamental story and what uh, how the India story is really turning out. We have quite a few of those factors aligned, we would say, or the stars aligned for uh, the India story or the India growth story. And uh, let's discuss how that will play out when it comes to uh, that translating to the Indian equity markets. And joining me for that is Feroz Aziz, uh, the Deputy CEO at Anandrati Wealth. Uh, very good morning, uh, Feroz, and a very happy new year to you as well. Uh, are we seeing a return of the FYIs? That's what I want to come up to first because that turnaround is what we're talking about. Hopefully, they are coming back. We're seeing that even in the fund flows, at least if you just go by yesterday's fund flow, FIIs were the bigger buyers there. Um, where really are they going to be parking their money in 2024? Will it be large caps, mid caps or small caps, according to you? Uh, Happy New Year, Stacey. Uh, wish each viewer a great year as well and a prosperous one. Uh, like you said, FIIs are ba back with the bank. If you look at November data, 9,000 crores was added. But in December, you see close to about 60,000 plus crores added in one single month. Uh, FIIs love the fact that there is continuity in terms of government. Uh, the probability of the government's continuing, government continuing went up dramatically. You've seen, if you analyze the last five general elections, the behavior of FIIs during the periods of a change in government, whichever that may be, uh, is very fearful and they exit. Uh, so this higher probability of continuance, which was already high, uh, has resulted in the money which was sitting on the sidelines to come in. Having said which, if this becomes a certainty uh, that the government continues and the, the kinds of monies which are waiting on the sidelines is very, very high. That's point one. Coming to your second part of the question, where would they put the money? There's been a paradigm shift which needs to be noticed from 2018 uh, to now. FIIs have changed their behavior when it comes to Indian capital markets. What they were doing in the past was sticking to 50 companies. In 2019, they expanded their universe to 100 companies of India. Now, when you see their participation in the small and mid-cap stocks, it's unbelievable. The number of FIIs in smaller stocks are in uh, dime and dozen. Now, I, feel, I see so many small cap stocks, but there are 50 FIIs owning small, small amounts. So, point is... FIIs are going to be participating in the India story, not with the large cap alone, but in the small cap. But small cap comes with smaller market caps. Uh, so the kind of pre rating you see with smaller amounts of monies is very high. That's why you see small cap outperforming. Uh, in fact, we were very bullish on small cap is why in the last one year, we in expanded our small cap exposure in our mutual fund model portfolio from 5 to 30%, which was one of the most dramatic changes we have ever done uh, in our company. Uh, and that paid out. But I personally think there's so much more juice left in the small cap. If you look at the kind of inflows which are coming, even on the domestic sides, our estimate uh, before the AMFI number, of course, in the small cap uh, funds is 3,000 crores for December. The precise number uh, or reported one is expected. So outperformance of small cap will continue uh, from a liquidity standpoint. Of course, I will tell you about the earnings potential and the valuations as well as we go along. Right. Right. Let's also look at the fact that how a Fed is reacting because uh, we are going to have the FOMC minutes come out uh, later this day. And uh, should one really be cautious, especially when you come uh, to we already know and it's kind of factored in now that, you know, there are rate cuts coming and to what uh, level and what percentage will just have to be, uh, you know, we'll wait and watch that how it plays out. But how does that uh, change for especially IT as a sector because a lot really changes for them in terms of their uh, uh, demand and their spends that they are going to put out. So how is that going to play out and especially, uh, you know, should we already forgive or really negate the fact that those uh, cuts are coming or there could be a surprise there for us? Uh, Stacey, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to an investor, uh, it's more about trying to find out the year FY20, uh, calendar year 2024, will it be of rate hikes or rate reductions and by how much? Uh, each transaction in the year in terms of a rate reduction or a, a, a narration does not impact how an investor has to look at his money. Of course, a trader is going to be uh, very, has to be very watchful of each transaction in the 2024. Uh, if I try and accumulate, and that's how we look at it, because we're more managing long-term monies, uh, there are close to about 140 to 150 rate cuts globally by central banks expected in 2024. And I think uh, with some degree of 5-10% tolerance, this number is going to happen. If that is going to happen, uh, there is going to be uh, some degree of flight of capital from debt to equity globally. 
that's what uh, the calendar year FY, calendar year 2024 has in store. Uh, so I would not be too perturbed about my strategy for the full year uh, with respect to what happens in the minutes currently. Yeah, but I'll be looking at how many rate cuts globally uh, will happen for the year. And that's that's our estimate of about 150 rate cuts uh, centrally. Central banks are going to do globally. Right. But I also want to get your sense on uh, the IT stocks. You know, if I just have to go by yesterday, we saw quite a drubbing uh, overseas in the US where there was a downgrade for something like Apple. And which is why uh, you saw, you know, the uh, repercussions in Asian markets even here, our IT index. So, uh, of course, this is just a knee jerk reaction, one would say. But how is one supposed to be treading these uh, stocks here? We have uh, earnings also coming just about a week's time from now, both TCS and Infosys coming out with their Q3 number. So how should one be looking at this at this point? Yes, uh, a trader definitely uh, should be a little more cautious on the IT side. Uh, but I think an investor, as I've been bullish uh, as a company uh, for the last six months on IT, because there was a clear evidence of bottoming out. Anytime a stock uh, performs better on a result day, on a bad result, uh, that's a reasonable lead indicator to it being bottomed out. And that happened in the June quarter. Uh, that's when uh, you start buying that sector, when you see bottoming out, and this becomes a lead indicator, point one. Point two, IT as a sector in this calendar year, uh, we believe has a 4-5% outperformance uh, possibility with respect to Nifty. Nifty IT can beat Nifty uh, by about 5%. And that's how relative uh, investment is what we should look at, relative outperformance, and that's what we look at, 5% is on cards. Uh, when it comes to Apple and other uh, how IT shapes up in the US, it's very different. You know, the kind of weights these uh, IT stocks, the big ones carry in the US uh, are largely those stocks are actually gobbled up by all index funds. So their repeats are largely because of stock uh, from free float becoming index fund portfolio, which never comes back into the market. Um, in, in India, there is a reasonable kind of spread in the mid cap space from an IT standpoint. I think that's the game. Uh, to play from a sector standpoint if I was a fund manager. But, uh, if you're looking at just earnings specifically, not for uh, the IT sector in specific, but as a whole, do you think Q3 is going to throw up some surprises or, or disappointments in that sense? Or you think we have a good uh, reason and uh, people are not really going to change much in terms of the valuations, even though they're high for India, that still you know, really shows and it will show through the earnings as well? I think, uh, Stacey, I think uh, the valuation being high, people don't do the math so much. Uh, they go by the headline number. If you look at the earnings growth over the last three years, when we predicted when it was 532 Nifty earnings, we predicted 750 and that, that turned out to be 777. The next year it was 819. In spite of Axis writing off some money to buy the City Consumer Bank, it was 819 last year. This year we projected 945. We are already on, on track for 965. Next year, we're projecting about uh, 1,080. That seems on the card. So when, when Nifty doubles and earnings double too, then uh, valuations don't change. 21, 22p on a forward-looking basis for a, a country like ours is not too expensive. So we compute something called the froth in Nifty, which is the numerical value differential, the ultimate differential between what is the current market price and what should be the fundamental level of Nifty right or wrongly. We try and find that difference and that's just 1.6% extra valuation. So the froth in the market, even if it's 20%, it's called froth. And if it is 1.5%, it's still called froth. Uh, so English words hide more. Uh, then they speak. So it's very important to take pen and paper and do the math. And if I'm looking at the math, it says just one and a half percent froth. And that's not too much of a froth when in the past uh, Nifty has shown a 30 percent froth also when we've started computing it over the last decade. And since you talk about froth and bubbles, I would want to ask your view on IPOs because we've seen a flurry mm -hmm. of activity. Yes, this first week has been, uh, you know, we're not seeing any major, the main board listing that is, but for other listing in the SME segment uh, uh, today itself. So how should one be looking at IPOs? Is it the market uh, sentiment right to be entering uh, for, uh, you know, in such companies or how would one really have to tread with caution here? Uh, Stacey, if I look at data, Indian behavior with respect to IPO, investors' behavior is very different than how Globe's, uh, Globe's behavior is when there is an IPO. Uh, you look at any any IPO on the listing day, uh, there's twice the stock which went as pre-float uh, got traded. So most people are trading IPOs for the listing gains. 
so I personally think that the strategy of the person has to be very different if you're going to be buying an IPO from a long-term standpoint and a trading mindset. But India is buying IPOs from a trading mindset. You look at the volumes in the first two, three days, that'll, that'll substantiate the hypothesis which I'm saying. Uh, point one, I'm saying that IPOs have to come. Uh, if valuations are attractive on the on the mid cap and small cap space, there are about 34 companies in the NSE 500 greater than 100 P. Uh, there are 160 companies greater than 50 P. So it's very likely and very rightly so that promoters would want to dilute their stake when the market is unketoric. Uh, but if you are an investor uh, in an IPO, you should wait till it settles down. Le look at a couple of quarters. If you're a trader, definitely demand and supply can give you some listing gains. So I would. Uh, be very happy because india as a country already has the maximum number of listed stocks in the world but requires far more uh, investing opportunities fund managers find it difficult uh, to to find in their interesting opportunities in the listed space so i'm very excited that uh, our our listed space is expanding uh, our market cap will in turn expand uh, as a proportion to gdp so this is one of the best developments for a country over the next couple of years better listed space ideas Interesting. Uh, before I let you go, one last question because we are barely a month away now from uh, the budget. Yes, it's only going to be a voted account, but uh, what are your expectations? Uh, if not, you know, this time around when the government does come to power, could there be any changes that we could expect when it comes to tax structures and how much could that then really sway uh, the markets as well? Uh, Stacey, I personally think that the budget is going to be good. If you look at how we have been very prudent on the fiscal side, we have just penetrated 44-45% of our fiscal deficit target. For the first seven months, the average for the last few years is 73% penetration. So that means there's a lot of money which is supposed to be spent in the second last five months of this year. So the budget is going to announce a lot of expenditure, uh, not largely for the next year because that's going to be a budget which is uh, the final budget for this government tenure. Uh, so I personally think it's going to be a little populist kind of a budget, but I don't think a large tax reform is possible in a budget like this. Uh, but if you look at the fine print and if you read between the lines of how this government has behaved in terms of taxation, uh, their theme has been simplicity. Uh, business taxation was simplified. Direct income tax was simplified. The next thing which I look for, uh, maybe not in this budget, in the next budget or a couple of budgets, is simplifying capital gain tax in India. Is, uh, is consistent with the theme this government has shown. If you look at capital gains in India, they are very weird. Mm, uh, real estate becomes long-term in two years, debt becomes long-term in three years, equity becomes long-term in one year, which is exactly the opposite how you would want to uh, motivate investor behavior. Uh, so I think capital gain tax has a three-dimensional matrix, STT paid, non-STT paid for different tenures and different asset classes. I think that such simplification is going to be on the cards uh, if I read the theme on which uh, taxation uh, has been changed uh, in the last uh, eight, 10 years of this government. Well, uh, that would be interesting to see. And if that does play out, it is um, uh, one of the wish lists that we've seen from most of the people who come across and say what they want from the budget. It would be a simplification of that uh, long-term capital gain tax. And we've been awaiting that for some time now. But uh, thanks so much, Feroz Aziz, there from uh, Anandrati Wealth uh, for giving us your time and perspective and helping our viewers uh, to navigate through this uh, market scenario. But with that... It's a wrap and goodbye from the entire team that puts this show together. Thanks so much for watching. But please do post your feedback for us in the comment section below and follow us in the link at the bottom of your screens. For the rest of the updates, stay tuned to Money Control as well as the Money Control app.